Well, hello everyone. Hopefully this video is not too windy. It's blowing a little, but not too bad. But So today, I need to replace the seals in, um, in this tilt cylinder on my new Holland backhoe. So this tilt cylinder has been leaking. The, uh, the seal, I don't know if you can see it, is pretty bad. I mean, that's just the dust seal, but you can imagine. And uh, I don't believe this seal in this tractor is a 2001. I don't think it's ever been replaced. You can't tell right now, but uh, before I started all of this mess, it had a pretty nice uh, uh, cap on there. The gland nut on that was um, painted well. Didn't look like it's been scratched up. Didn't actually look like it had been touched. So my uh, my th my thought is, I guess, is that uh, it's got the original seals in it and they all need to be replaced. So, but not only is this video about replacing the seals on one of these tilt cylinders, it's also about how to get a gland nut like this uh, off when you just can't get that thing off. So, um... I didn't really know a ton about this one. I've never tore down a cylinder like this one before, but uh, this one is not threaded. So if you have one of these New Hollands, this is a New Holland LB75B 2001 model backhoe. And uh, these are not threaded. They're actually held in by a retaining wire probably can't see too well as you can see now I finally got that wire starting to move but uh, these retaining wires just hook on and you spin them until they uh, pretty much wind all the way up in that little hole and that's it that's what holds the gland in so they're not threaded uh, but even without being threaded man this thing was a pain I'll give you a little backstory on what I had to do. Started with the pipe wrench, assuming that it was going to come off relatively easy. You know, it's a good size pipe wrench and, a, uh, you know, a cheater bar, breakover bar. And, uh, man, I could not get it off. If you look at it, um, I kept tightening that uh, pipe wrench down. And that thing actually was just chewing off metal. This is not an aluminum cap. This is was just chewing off the metal off of that uh, that gland nut there, or that gland. So I stopped with the uh, the pipe wrench and uh, decided to do, I guess, the right way. And I bought the spanner wrench, which is uh, what you can see here. Never really, well, there's my cheater bar I'm using. Let me put this down. So I've never really used a spanner wrench on these before, um, mainly because, you know, you either have one that uses a spanner by having the notches on it, like you can see here, uh, or they'll have, you know, like keyholes in the front of the gland, and you'll have a different type of uh, wrench set up where they slide into those holes and spin. Uh, but again, on this one, this one used the, uh, the spanner wrench type. As you can see, you just hook the spanner over it like this, and it would go. And uh, this one's an adjustable one that goes from like, I don't know, two and a half inches to four and a half or something like that. But they're not that expensive. I think this was like 20 bucks on Amazon. And uh, honestly, I really like this. I wish I would have started with this instead of the pipe wrench. But again, it was on very tight and uh even the spanner wrench couldn't get it off i put a cheater bar on it and if you look kind of close here it actually was just eating off the metal from the lip here i mean the spanner wrench was just ripping it off that's how tight this thing was on so next thing i did was uh what typically i hear to do and that's to heat them up i didn't want to use a cutting torch because I've heard that too much heat will warp these uh, these cylinder bore or whatever that tube is, whatever it's called. Uh, I heard that heating it up too much, you know, not melting it, but will warp it. So I didn't want to do that. So I have a propane torch. Gets pretty dang hot. Um, and I put that on it. 
It wasn't hot enough to really burn the paint, which was good, but it did get hot enough to boil out hydraulic fluid in there. So I know it was getting hot in there and uh, didn't do it, didn't matter. Put the spanner wrench back on after it cooled down, didn't move whatsoever. So I was almost at the point where I thought I was just gonna have to rip this whole cylinder off and uh, bring it to a shop and get them to beat on it and tear it all up and probably have to buy a new gland. But um, but I started researching to see if anybody's had this same problem. Of course, tons of people have this problem. But I found one post online. So this isn't my original idea or anything. And um, But uh, I found a post online where a guy uh, said there was the peening method, which is typically like when you're welding, you use these... Uh, these little ball peen hammers and uh, what happens is when you when you strike a blow with the ball peen the rounded side it will somewhat distort the metal just a little bit and uh, give you a, just a hair of breathing room and a lot of times it breaks loose uh, apparently things like this now I showed you a small ball peen I bought like a cheap you know five hammer set from Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks 17 bucks something like that you might notice a lot of tools in my videos are, are Harbor Freights. I try to buy the ones that are sort of going to last at least. Uh, but my property doesn't have a Home Depot or anything like that near. Strangely enough, there's a Harbor Freight about six miles away. And uh, when I need a tool, that's where I have to go. But uh, there are a lot of junk tools there. And then there's some good tools. And this is just your regular old cheap fiberglass handered uh, ball ping hammer. But again, for 20 bucks, I got five of them. There's three there one here and then i'm going to show you the one i was using of course which was the largest one um i started with a small one but you know it really wasn't really wasn't doing much um it's 32 ounce ball ping hammer so anyways i had to i had to peen it quite a bit but uh the idea of it here is is you start at the edge of whatever you would think the the threads are of course this is not threaded but I got a, a parts diagram of this and and that gland nut goes in a, you know about right to here a lot of times you can tell how far it goes in because they usually put these uh, uh, hydraulic nozzle heads or whatever at the very end of the tube right before the gland nut so that cylinder can move as much as possible so uh, so that's a good indicator of about where that gland's gonna stop it's right about behind this uh, this um, piping or whatever you want to call it but anyways the point is is you start in a line and you just start peening you know lines uh some of the blows a little bit you can see i missed or got tired of messing with this was the medium size uh hammer you can see did that then i just moved up to the big one because i peened it once with the a smaller one didn't do much i moved up to the medium one and you know at least it was given a chip in a little bit of paint and uh wrenched at it for a little bit didn't want to budge so i used the the, the big peening hammer and i only had to do i don't know i did i'd say about six lines you know evenly spaced around this thing uh before i was actually able to start getting this to budge so anyway so with that um beating i was able to actually start getting the cap to move as you can see the wire is finally starting to come out and uh, it's getting a lot easier to move I don't have to put much force on that that cheater bar to get that thing to move so what's gonna happen is this gland nuts gonna spin all the way around and that wire is gonna start feeding out until it gets to the end and then you just take it out and uh, this gland then should just slide out now I left it on the backhoe uh, mainly because I don't again I don't want to warp this tube any so I don't want to winch it down or, or, or tighten it down on a uh, vise and risk, uh, you know, tearing up this tube. So my thought was, is if I can at least get the gland nut off while it's still attached, you can see that I have uh, the pin still here holding the cylinder. And this just has like a, a ring that goes over here and then there's a pin. I can show you that. On this one, um... There's this pin that goes down into here, and it's it's not really attached or anything, but this uh, seal, this spring-type seal that goes around it, actually holds it in. So I had to get a, a flathead screwdriver and pull one side up. You can use a 
special wrenches that actually expand instead of contract when you squeeze them that you can use also. But I just put a flathead screwdriver under one side, got it up over this lip, and then I got another flathead screwdriver and I just started walking around it to pull it off and I was able to get it over this lip pretty easy. And then of course this pin, after you do that, just easily slides out. So, and this pin is uh, working its way out on its own so it's not gonna be hard to get out. I just dropped that. All right, so again though, that's why I left the cylinder here on the backhoe. So that way I could wrench on it pretty good and not have to worry about it slipping around in a vise or, or, uh, or whatever. So. I'm going to get this gland cap off, I'm going to pull that pin right there, and then hopefully by hand I'm going to be able to pull this off. If not, I'll just get my other tractor, put a, uh, put a loop on that thing, a little rope, and, uh, and lift it straight up. Now, if that cap doesn't come off very easy, you still can leave this, uh, the stick of the cylinder attached, and then you can just pull it off. You can hit it a couple times, don't go nuts with it, but you can hit it a couple times, which should you know, use the force to kind of pop that gland off. So anyways, this is the first part of the video <laughs> that explains uh, getting these freaking caps off. So if you torch it, you know, and you can't get it off, like I said, I mean, I've seen some videos where they have torched the heck out of this, completely burnt the paint off. I mean, I would be worried, honestly, that they were going to be warping that tube. Um, you know, great. That's, that's a common method. People do it, but I just didn't really want to do that. And um, when I read about this peening method, that actually just slightly loosens up um, this this end of the of the tube. Uh, I wanted to try it, and man, sure enough, this guy swore by it. He said he's been doing it his whole life, and uh, you know, some some have to be peened more than other, but he said it always seems to work. So, uh, you know, I don't even know who posted it, but you know, I'll put uh, maybe a link to that that post in there because. Uh, you know, hats off to that guy. He really helped me get through this. I was about ready to just completely machine this gland off and uh, and just have to buy a new one. But sure enough, now it, it's turning like it's not that big of a deal. So I wanted to show you this wire as you're as you're spinning this gland. Once you get it to break free, as you're spinning it, and if you've got the retaining wire uh, type cylinder, I mean this this is my new Holland one, but this is how big that wire. I mean that's. It's got to be more than one loop. I mean, I don't know, maybe, but that thing is, is just huge. So you've got a good amount to go. And as you can see, it's uh, it's pretty rusty. It's got some garbage on it. Maybe that helps hold it in place. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to clean that up real well, the the gland in there and uh, in the inside of the housing uh, to let these eventually, if I ever need to rebuild it, um, move back. Now that I've got that off, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this gland down if I can before uh, before I try to take this uh, the cylinder housing off and then if that comes down pretty easy I'm just gonna take this cylinder housing off until I can get to the uh, the nut on the end of this uh, the cylinder stick and then uh, I'm gonna start rebuilding but all right thanks everyone if any of this stuff is helpful uh, you know please subscribe to the channel thumbs up the video leave a comment whatever if you have any details about it or if you have anything helpful to anybody else that's searching the same problem you know put that details down in the comments and uh, you know let everybody else know what the easiest way to get this stuff is I mean this is uh, again why I make these videos but please uh, hit that subscribe button YouTube just doesn't let us do anything without having subscribers so if you would uh, hit that subscribe button hit the little bell I think they have now where you can get updates but uh, you know, please help support the channel and I'll just keep making videos. Thanks everyone.